What's up, everybody? Welcome to What's Real. Your host, Waylon Cooley, man. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Now, today we got another special, special, special guest. I always say one of my good friends. You know what? Because they are my good friends. So check this out, though. I got to do my disclaimer. You know, next time I'm just going to have graphics pop up on the screen, but I'm going to just start off this way as I always do around this time. This segment was put together as an outlet for friends in the general audience to chat about concerns and op- I mean, opinions as they relate to the global situation, circumstances. You know, we are not experts in any way in the medical, legal, religion, or politics, and information is truly our opinion. And each individual person, this does not reflect our business or our sponsors. This is what's real, y'all. All right, you guys, check it out. You know, it's what's real as always. Um, I got the talented comedian, actor, radio TV personality. His stand-up has been on been seen on BET's Comic View, Comedy Central, The Kings of Comedy, The Tom Joyner Sky Show on TV One, and HBO P Diddy's Bad Boys. You know, now this com- this comedian that I'm talking about, y'all, it's my main man, good friend for so long now. I'm gonna welcome Mr. Damon Williams. That's the sound. What's up? All right, what's going on, man? What's happening, Way? Hey, man, life is good, man. Even though we're going through a pandemic, man. But listen, that's temporary. We we know God is good, brother. But listen, I like to welcome you to the show, man, Damon. It's an honor to have you here, man. Um, you know, doing these. Look, I said doing these rough times. Let me get him and give him some, some inspiration, right quick. So Chicago, stand up, now. I got to say this to you, my brother. Um. You've been repping Chicago since I met you uh, at TNT back in the day, man, after graduating from college, bro. And as a well-respected entertainer, man, you believed in me and gave me one of my first breaks, bro. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I'm just letting you know, man. They said, get the roses to them while they're here, brother. You know, man, you uh, had me filming D-Ray, Leon Rogers, and every comedian on BT Comic View that came to Chicago, man. I thank you, brother. I just wanted you to really know that, man. (laughs) <laughs> Man, I, I, I didn't know that was your first break, but I'm glad I was able to do it. And I would love to know, where's that footage now? Because we should do something with it. You know? <laughs> Seriously, people looking for content, man. We need to talk about that. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, but man, I, I had to put it out there, man. Look, I got to find that footage, too. You know, all these formats done changed so much. But, man, listen, brother, I, th- that's just real, man. Um, you know, now this is something that 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 messed me up. You know, I had to do a little research, but mm-hmm. but but from comedian from from comedy, uh, you must have been inspired, my brother, to close a subway and start telling jokes. <laughs> All these years I've known you, I did not know you even own the subway. But man, I looked up at your bio was there, and I mean, so how do you go? How do you switch from a business owner to a comedian? Please help me out. How did yeah. that happen? If your business ain't making no money, you easily switch from business owner to a comedian because that that Subway franchise wasn't the first joke. Um, I did it for two years, though, man. I had that store for like two and a half years. A lot of good things came from that store. Actually, my son wouldn't have been conceived if I didn't have that Subway because I met his mom at that Subway. So that was the blessing of the store. Plus, it um, transitioned me from... I worked at a city job and I was doing some other little side hustles and things of that nature. I transitioned from all of that into Subway. Then I left Subway and I found comedy. And I found comedy from being uh, a Subway owner because that's why I heard people talking about all jokes aside and open mic and the rest, as they say, is history. Got you. Well, hey, well, man, listen, that you did well. <laughs> no, I'm not yeah. saying it that way. Goodness. So, I mean, now check this out. I'm going I'm to throw this in there, man, because, you know, with the longevity, I know, like I said, you've been doing this for a minute. God has been good to you, brother, because, I mean, you're still relevant. You're still out there big time. So how was it, you know, working with the biggest comedians? I would just say comments at the time, um, you know, on tour and with the history of those legends like Steve Harvey. Uh, Cedric the Entertainer, Bernie Mac, D.L. Hughley, and I'm and Damon Williams. How was that working with them on the Kings of Comedy tour, man? Well, th- at that point, you know, I was the young gun uh, of the crew, and um, so they were all like big brother mentors. Now, even though we all were close in age, except for Steve, I think Steve is the oldest of, of that that list. Um, right, right. So I had worked with all of them at All Jokes Aside. Luckily, in Chicago, All Jokes Aside was the premier, preeminent black comedy experience in the United States. Everybody came there from Chappelle on down, you know, Chris Rock. I worked with him when he was working on his special to do uh, that whole OJ. I ain't saying he should have killed her, but I understand. He worked that set 
and, and right. I just sat and I was hosting that weekend. So it was um it was a place to you know to, to really connect with the majors at the time. So to be okay. uh, selected to go and hit the road with those guys was an ultimate honor, and it's one that I earned uh, after they you know narrowed it down from a few other choices, and then I ended up doing the whole tour, which included thirty uh, dates, including two appearances at the Chicago United Center. And that was the like the culmination of it, to go around the country with the cats and then to bring the show home and be right. at the house Mike built. You know, that was, it was awesome. Dude, that's incredible, man. You know, now how was it working with Bernie Mac may he rest in peace, brother? Well, of all of them, of course, I knew Bernie the, the best because he, a uh, Chicago guy, and he was sort of a, the big brother to us all in Chicago already before he really blew up. And once he blew, he really didn't leave Chicago uh, completely. So he was still around as I was, uh, like I say, coming up in the ranks and I earned his respect. And, you know, he started to mentor me a little bit. And then he let me um, host his room, which was Miltroneers on Tuesday nights. And that was a legendary uh, thing he did every Tuesday, you know, held about 70 people, if that many. And if you didn't get in there by six o'clock, the doors was locked too late. You ain't gonna make it. And then the, the top entertainers from around the country, when they were in town, they would all stop by. Midnight Mac became the TV show on HBO. So me and Bernie had a strong relationship. I eventually hired his manager to be my manager. So we were sort of like all in the camp and in the team together. So That's God bless his soul. And, you know, he was really... As the Bernie Mac you see is the Bernie Mac he was, and he was genuine to the day he died. Wow. May he rest in peace, man. Peace, man. That was a good comedian, man. You know, now, I'm going to talk about your energy, brother. You know, over the years, man, I, I, like I said, I've known you for years. If you remember, man, you hooked, you know, Dane, do you, I don't even know if you remember this. Um, <laughs> I This is something I reflect on. Do you remember you came to Valpo, man? We was doing a commercial uh, for, I think it was one of your shows, for, and we put, you know, we're gonna put it on BET. And um, we sat, <laughs> we sat in my bedroom and edited like uh, that commercial, like for about two hours. Do you remember that? I know that's so I don't never, Let me tell you something. I have a lot of memories that I, you know, have lost over the years. I don't know if it's because I've been getting free drinks my whole career, but <laughs> I certainly don't remember sitting in your bedroom for two hours. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, just and you know, I, would prefer, just, I would prefer I prefer you stop telling that story after this. Okay, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, I remember coming out, man. I know we had to go through some some footage to get that because we used to try to get our BET commercials for for TNT and for uh, Star Plaza. Right. So yeah, I mean, like you say, you you've been uh, documenting it and, and right there throughout my career, including my wedding. So you know, we could get all the way to that. You know, right. you you had to. What's they call the photo booth at yeah, my wedding? So exactly. you have been my photographer of choice and, and videographer for sure for many many years. Hey man, I really appreciate that man. But so check this out though. See, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm enjoying that energy, man, that you you have now. I mean, this energy is off the chain. So you know, I know you constantly working hard, man, on the TV from the TV radio perspective, doing shows. But I see you and the wife traveling a lot, man. You know, on tour, man, and you know, I see you seem to be very happy, brother. Yeah, and, and let's not jinx it. Most times when people come on and say how happy they are on an interview or they the 10 top couples on Ebony Magazine cover, that following year, their ass is broken up. So, yes, we, we, are, we are doing it, though, man. I mean, I, I picked the best partner I could have, or God sent me the best one I could have because she she's funny. Um, her energy matches mine or uh, exceeds it at times, and she's very agreeable and supportive. So that's been a blessing. Plus, uh, she's semi-retired from hairstylist and actually physical training, personal training, not personal training, fitness training. And so she had the opportunity to travel with me and that made us uh, a, a stronger bond and kept our couple uh, as relationships like should go, you know, stronger for us to have opportunities as you see to go around and have make foodie videos and eat. And right. she helped me with my merchandise at the show. So we like a team, man. That's so dope. thank God uh, I, I have my wife and thank you for bringing up. <laughs> No problem, man. None whatsoever. So I guess I want to ask you, man, look, I'm a, uh, it's two things here, and, and we only got two more questions for you. I'm going to let you go because I know you're a busy guy. Um, so now, this is not – I've never seen this, but I thought I should ask you because you are actor and comedian. Have you ever froze up on stage, man, and had that aha moment where you might have forgot your lines or what? Yeah, I did. Actually, it was a TV taping, my first ever TV taping. Okay. which came along way too soon in my career. I was just fortunate to be 
The guy, all jokes aside, who hosted the open mic, so they assumed I must be a, a seasoned veteran because I, I host that night. And, they, you know, they came to me as a consultant on who was, was doing what in Chicago through comedy and such. So right. they gave me the shot to be on Comic Justice on Comedy Central. This was a show hosted by A.J. Jamal. It was uh, produced by Sinbad's brother, uh, Mark Atkins, along with Sinbad and, and his partner, Andre Wiseman, the three of them. And they gave me the shot, man. So... It was a seven minute set and I might have been three minutes in and, and everything went blank, man. I'm talking about cameras rolling, people sitting there looking at me and I just got stuck. And so they started applauding, you know, like, come on, man, you could do it. I'm like, oh, yeah. And I remembered. And then I continued the joke. So, of course, thanks to the, the beauty of editing, people couldn't tell. But you could tell that joke had a, a blink in it. If you as a seasoned eye, you would immediately know right. that that was an edit because I had forgot the damn rest of the joke. Wow. <laughs> Hey, well, man, look, you know, we all have those aha moments in our brother. I'm glad that you uh, haven't continued to do those, because like I said, long as I've been working with you, I've never seen it. So, I mean, we've been working together for some years, you know. Do you remember also, too, I mean, to throw this in there, when we, um, I saw you in Atlanta, that was for the Soul Train Awards. I think at the time you was filming, Anita, you was, no, you was interviewing Anita Baker, because I was shooting for, I think I was shooting for T. I forgot who I was shooting for. Oh, Chrisette Michelle and Rick Ross for uh, B for uh, okay. for Central. Uh, you know, BT Central, whatever. Right, but, Central. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and you was interviewing Anita Baker, and then Jesse Jackson run over there to jump in your interview, and I think he tried to take over the mic. <laughs> I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> that's a definite true story, man. Um, what it really happened was, I think Jesse and Anita were already talking, and I bum rushed their conversation what? so I could get that. Yeah, so I can get that Anita interview. And then uh, somebody came up from behind her, man, and Anita Baker got real paranoid wow. issues. She got a lot of paranoia, a lot of superstitious type ways. Okay. Uh, like she had, like, like her hotel, when she's on tour, when she walk in her hotel room, mm -hmm. the bed has to be in the same direction in the room. So if you walk in the bed, right. let's say to the right, if the room, you know, the bed ain't to the right, then she don't want that room because she, she likes her routine. Because, you know, touring wow. is... You know, it's it's you want some type of normalcy when you going from city to city and hotel to hotel. That's right. kind of eccentric to me. But, but so she's but she's very paranoid. Like I would work with her a couple times. That's why I knew her at right. the time. That's why I was able to get the interview. Otherwise, she might not even accept the interview. Wow. Um, from her job, you know, from her performing at Star Plaza Theater and Chicago Theater, the guys that ran those theaters uh, used to have me open for her. So she has some familiarity. Well, I know who it was. And, uh, I think it was George Wilborn. I think George uh, popped up behind her. She's like, man, don't be sneaking up on me like that. And it was like, it was a weird phenomenon. But yeah, that was a great time, man. We were both fortunate to be backstage at that. Uh, that was a Soul Train Award. And Don Cornelius was still alive. He was there. Mm -hmm. Um and it was major, man. The Eyes, Ron Isley got an honorary award. And I remember it ran to like two in the morning because yes, production sir. was so choppy. And Ron had his infant son with him, him and his wife. And they were just sitting there, man, till almost two in the morning. So they got to his Lifetime Achievement Award. So it was raggedy on production, <laughs> but it was an opportunity because I was backstage. Like you said, I interviewed so many people back there. Rick Ross, Chrisette, uh, Terrence Howard, and Taraji. That's how I really got my friendship with Taraji. Okay. Um, the names go on and on. You know, Bruno Mars, he shot through. And, and the reason why he shot through because he was so little, he went past and I ain't catching. <laughs> I looked up and he was already over there. I'm like, oh, damn, that was him right there. Um, Rick Ross was leaving, man. And, and, you know, I don't know if he recognized me or if he was just a, a real cordial dude because his whole entourage was leaving. I'm like, Rick, can I get a couple minutes? Right. He looked back at me and said, yeah, no no doubt, my G. And he stopped and he was loud. And I'm, when I say loud, man, that man was loud off that loud. It was, woo, it was loud. Um, I think I got high after that. So I tell you a funny story about that, though. So Peebo Bryson, Jeffrey Osborne was back there. Right. Uh, and this was in the little VIP room where, the, you know, the people sitting around. Shante Moore was sitting there chilling. And I'm not name dropping. This is just how many people. It's a show. It's an award show. Exactly. So they all in this little, little room, you know, chilling with the refreshments and such. And so was Freddie Jackson. So I interviewed Peebo. Then I interviewed uh, Jeffrey Osborne and Shante. Now, Freddie saw me do this. And he kept making himself obvious, like his turn was next. His turn was next. But I did not interview him on purpose. I ignored him because Freddie Jackson used to be an asshole, like for real. Um, and I'll give you an example. First of all, when Melba Moore was struggling, she said he never came to check on her. And he was platinum and she was she was having issues, health and financial. So I say that Melba Moore is a, a follower. She comes on uh, my happy hour every day to, and listens okay. to the music every once in a while. Um, but. 
I had a personal experience with him. Now, this was the uh, Cincinnati Jazz Festival, which is now, you know, the Cincinnati Summer Fest or whatever. And Freddie was on it. And this one, he was hot. Just like maybe right before or in between album one and two or two and three. But he was Freddie. You know, he showed a pad Freddie. So everybody in the Cincinnati airport and we chilling. Stevie Wonder right there talking to people, eating people's popcorn, which we don't know how he knew they had popcorn. He just reached out and took this girl popcorn. We like this fool can see. Um so here come Freddie Jackson. Now, Stevie Wonder, the legend, the, the songwriter, the amazing dude was humble enough to stand there and talk to us. Freddie was like, mm, 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 don't talk to me. No pictures, no pictures. He came through, you know, he was, mm, 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 mm. And man, I said, okay, I'll never forget that, Freddie. And I wasn't even in the industry. I was just a fan. I was a big fan. And I feel like you should never do your fans like that. Right. It would take two seconds to say hello. Or, you know, even even a way to say, look, I'm running late or something. But you acknowledge your people. Exactly. So exactly. fast forward. 2007 or eight, I think that was. I was like, he was like, he was looking like, you want to interview me? Like, no, right, right, I'm right. good. <laughs> Plus, you don't look that, you don't look good right now. I don't think you want to be on camera. Right, now, right. hopefully, he's healthy and then doing all right. But that's the story from that whole award show situation wow. back there, man. That was awesome that you were back there, and so was I. Man, it's a blessing, brother. I mean, just to see how far we done came, man. I, and, and like you said, just to be there together, man. I know, man, I tapped you on the show. You looked at me and I said, dang, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, man, let's get it. You let's know, it, baby, we here. Look, started from the bottom. Now we here. Yes, sir. And look from the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, you crazy? I had to do it like that. Hey, man, listen, man. Uh, all joke. Look, all jokes aside, in that a spot too. But okay, uh, dude, do you remember this? Um, so. Uh, this is the first time, so damn, you're the first one to play the trivia, Cooley's trivia on what's real. All right. Who was the first black comic uh, that had a TV show? Uh, Red Fox, Bill Cosby, Flip Wilson. Flip Wilson, easy. Okay. Well, no, no, not if not, that's not true. The first black comedian, but it was a drama, was Bill Cosby because he was on I Spy. Mm. But to have their to have their own show was Flip Wilson. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. All right. Yep. Second one. Um, who made up the phrase mm -hmm. "I ain't scared of you, mother suckers"? Was it Ethel <laughs> from, from from Red Fox? Was it Stop. Dallas? It's Bernie oh. Mac. Stop it. Stop it. Don't stop it. Come okay. on now. That's Bernie Mac. I can stop you right there. You gonna stop me right there? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Last question. Um, who was the first black president? Was it Abraham Lincoln, Obama, or Bill Clinton? <laughs> it was actually, uh, well, I guess he was the president. What's the guy? The, actually, the first black president came out of the Continental Congress when they signed the Declaration of Independence. And it was a black guy. If you look on a hundred dollar bill, one of those bills, he was actually like the president temp before George Washington or whoever the first real elected president was. So uh -huh. to your trick question, uh -huh. uh, but I, I don't give a damn who else claimed to be black. Uh, we got to go with Barack. <laughs> OK, OK. Well, then you didn't so, do it. So you, you passed because, look, I didn't know the answer to half of them anyway. I just made it up for the <laughs> trivia. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Well, it was cool talking about what's real. Listen, every day, man, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I do my happy hour where it's just a chance for me to, you know, fellowship with the people that have been following me for the years. But I'm not telling jokes. I'm playing music and it's good grown music. We have a good time uh, coming soon. Probably by the time this uh, airs, you can go on urbanflix.tv. And uh, I have a show coming out called Laugh Tonight with Damon Williams. It's a stand up series with uh, sit down interviews with the comedians before they're set. Uh, and there's a movie called White People Money and another movie called Heaven on Seven. Those should be released. Or they're actually making the rounds in the film festivals now. I don't know if they're going to be theatrical or independent or Hulu or wherever they end up, but I'm in them. So those are things that uh, I just want people to know about. My Instagram is Damon Williams Comedy. All my um, links are on DamonWilliamsComedy.com. And it's been real. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, my brother. I got your fly up there, man. Listen, yeah. folks, I want to thank my brother, Damon. Thank you, for first of all, man, for tuning in and uh, being on the show, man. Um, brother, like I said, again, you've been an inspiration in my life. Um, and let's continue to get this money, man, and enjoy life. And you know what? Have fun like we're doing. 
of where we're at in our days in, in life and enjoying it, man. So continue to ride. I will be hollering at you for sure, for sure. And I'm going to show up at one of these events, man. You know, let your boy in VIP, man. You know, I'm going to have on a fresh little jacket on and everything. Now, man, I'm, you're going to probably... You, you probably have to show up virtual. Speaking of which, there's also a virtual uh, game show we have called The Comedy Squares. Look out for that, too. That's Whoa. what's up, man. Okay. That's what's real. And we're going to chop it up soon, brother. Thank you so much, Dave. I'm going to close it on. Right, you be safe. Peace. I'm going to go ahead and let you slide on out. What's that yeah. say? Uh-oh. I'm drunk, but you're still ugly. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Right, man. All right, Dave. All right. Peace. Good Later. night. Have a good one. Later. Yeah. Man, thank y'all so much for tuning in to What's Real. My main man, Damon Williams, stopped by for a minute, you know, to give us his glow, y'all. You know, it was an honor to film this brother and just, you know, talk to him and have a good conversation with him for a minute. Like I told y'all, and, you know, you saw throughout the interview, he's been an inspiration in Cooley Video Life, you know, uh, played a major role in it to get me going on when I got back from college. Uh, I had the vision and ideas and concepts, but the brother gave me a chance and he was already doing big things. And, you know, we all need that person in our lives that give us that break, you know, and it was an honor to, you know, film one of the legends in my in my life to help me. And guess what? Next week, and if not next week, in the up and, uh, up and coming weeks, I will have a guy on this show called Ron Carbo, a major, another influential person in my life to help me um, when he was at the top of his game back in the day, working with Brian McKnight and New Kids on the Block. Actually, he was the producer for New Kids on the Block. Uh, he did all their music. He got Grammys and everything. And he caught me. This gentleman caught me while I was in college and, and gave me the blueprint before I graduated to help me and guide me and, and, and get you know on the right path. So I want to make sure that you uh, guys stay tuned and look for that show that's coming. But Dave, we out. Take care. Good night. And it's not even night, y'all. Just have a good day. Be safe and enjoy life. What's real? Your host, Waylon Cooley. Peace.